Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to do something a little bit different. You see, normally when we talk about Warhammer, we talk about the creatures, the monsters, the demons, but they're all found on land, aren't they? But what if we look deeper into the oceans of Warhammer, as the world itself is just generally not safe. It's not just land that you have to be fearful of, but also what lurks in the oceans below. So yeah, let's have a little bit of a chat about some strange creatures that unfortunately we don't really hear too much about. So we're going to start off with the behemoth and we're going to read over its entry. Keep in mind that a lot of these creatures do not have a lot of lore nor do they have a lot of artwork but the behemoth is an immense narwhal-like creature with a single huge horn jutting from its blunt snout. Unlike a whale its mouth is lined with vicious sword-like teeth each over six feet in length. When the behemoth attacks, it moves at a great speed towards its victim, usually from below, quickly gathering momentum until it spears it on its great horn, often skewing its prey completely. Once it has completed and impaled its prey, the behemoth will drag it underwater and carry it off to its lair, where it can feast upon the morsel at its leisure. So what we do know about this creature is it's a very large whale, very similar to a narwhal, and what you can see from the artwork is it is very, very large. We only see a little bit of a ship next to it, but it's very small compared to this massive beast. If you look closely to the artwork next to the creature's mouth, there is also a rowboat, a very large one I'd say, as it does seem to have six oars, so this is one of the creatures that you would have to deal with if, say for example, you decided to travel from Bretonia to Lustria, there's always the risk of being hit by one of these. The next is the Megalodon. So, there's very little lore here, let's just go over it. The Megalodon is a little known species of shark, four or five times as large as its nearest relative. In common with other sharks, it is an efficient and ruthless predator, and that's pretty much all we know about these. What we do know is they're very large, we can see that from the artwork too, and its rules, as we can see on screen, kind of show how hyper-aggressive these creatures really are. Now, there is a theory regarding these, which is why I wanted to talk about them. The Megalodon might actually be some sort of of living avatar of the god Stromfels. As that god himself is known as the shark god, even as the lord of predators, he's even represented sometimes as a large shark. So it could be that the Megalodon is some sort of avatar or just very blessed children, but we don't really have too much context, only that they actually exist and they're very, very dangerous. The next, we're getting two together as they're linked up, and we can actually get a little bit more context on the scope of scale of these absolute monstrosities, the Orb and Black Leviathan. There are several species of a Leviathan in the oceans of the world. They have in common the fact that they are bony fish whose heads and loins are protected by heavy scales. They are all voracious predators. The Orb Leviathan is pale in colour and swathed in a fatty layer like blubber of a sea. It is a small species, with full-grown adults reaching a mere 45 yards in length. The creature is ungainly with a slow metabolism, suited for the life in the depths of the coldest oceans. During chilly winters, they are sometimes sighted in the Sea of Claws. Unsuited for active hunting, the beast bears a luminous lure that waves back and forth upon a tendril in front of its gaping, upturned mouth. Master Stefan Ellendon, Professor of Sciences at the University of Zalzenmund, has speculated that the Orb Leviathan is the true adult form of the Lurkerfish. But whilst their lures do work in similar ways, the beasts are a entirely separate species. The greatest of these fish is the Black Leviathan, a huge carnivorous deep-sea fish, with a cavernous mouth full of barbed fangs and scales thicker than the hull of a great ship. Whilst the Black Leviathan makes its lair in the depths of the sea, it hunts on the surface. Its habit is to approach suitable prey by swimming low in the water. As it closes, it rises from the waves, vast moor agape, and gulps its victim down whole. The measurements of the Black Leviathan are a popular subject of debate amongst scholars. Master Ellendon claims to have conducted a meta-analysis of reports of Black Leviathan sightings and supposes the average specimen to be four furlongs and two chains from foretust to tail tip. Essentially, just very, very large. And this is one of these creatures which 
really makes you feel on edge. You know that it's actively hunting, despite the fact that it lives so down below the depths of the oceans. You could be going off on a trade ship. You could be, well, even just basically fishing and snap. You're gone. I come from a long line of fishermen, and even with just these three creatures discussed so far, I would think twice about going into the ocean unless I really, really had to. Next is the leech worm, and I absolutely love these creatures just because of the description. So, another inhabitant of those areas of the sea floor, corrupted by the concentrations of Dar is the chasm leech. It's very important to note that a lot of the sea floor is actually corrupted by dark magic. Dark magic fuels these creatures, which is what likely makes them so big. Anyways, let's continue. These huge worms are not, in and of themselves, fierce animals. Their mouth parts are lined with rasping teeth, but the leeches are sluggish and soft-bodied, and in order for them to ingest the flesh that makes up their diet, that meat that must already be well on its way to putrefaction. However, when chasm leeches locate a corpse, they worm their way inside the body and multiply. A corpse infested with chasm leeches may start to move once again, the leeches replacing the sinew and muscle of the decayed creature with their own bodies. Now that they have a host, the leeches are dangerous. To sustain their lifestyle, they must send more corpses to the depths. Leech worms are the animated corpses of sea dragons that have been swept into the depths and infested with chasm leeches. The sea dragon is the preferred host of the leeches, for it possesses enough flesh to keep them fed for many years, whilst providing them with a powerful and massive body capable of slaying other creatures for the next generation of leeches to inhabit. So sea dragons themselves would have made it on the list, but the leech worm I believe is just more terrifying, as the grand majority of the sea dragons are either you know, under the sway of the Dark Elves, or at a certain point, if they take enough damage, they will flee. Whereas Leech Worms would likely just keep bashing and bashing because they need to bring something else down. And I feel like that's really terrifying. You can see from the artwork, it's grim as hell. Plus, there's something about leeches reanimating a corpse to do its destruction. It's just really, really cool. There's other types of undead sea dragons because we know like bone hydras exist, which are multi-headed sea dragons. But uh, the leech worm just really takes the cake for me. Next is the gargantuan. The gargantuan is a sinuous beast many hundreds of feet in length. Its body is immensely powerful and muscular reaching a diameter of up to 10 yards. According to the Elves of Ulfwan, there is only one gargantuan, which has dwelled in the depths since the dawn of the world. On occasion, voyagers have sworn that they have seen the enormous serpent swimming after shoals of fish, swinging its more side to side as it seeks to satisfy its appetite. Such reports are rare. Perhaps this is because, as the elves suggest, the Gargantian really is the sole survivor of a species that once thrived before the coming of chaos. But a grimmer truth is that the Gargantian is a belligerent and cruel creature that is just as pleased to shatter a ship and devour its crew as to swallow a swarm of krill. The Gargantian's preferred method of attack is to approach its prey from below, wrap its sinuous coils around its victim, and crush the life from it. Should the prey prove to be too obstreperous, the Gargantian resorts to another form of attack. Its vast, muscular body can deliver a powerful jolt of electricity to anything caught within its coils. The creature, as you can tell from the artwork, is absolutely massive. Like, you can see a really large ship there, and it's tiny compared to this massive beast, which could easily just, you know, snap it in two with its mouth. Now, there's always been a theory about this creature that there actually might be more. You see, there is an area known as the Boiling Sea, and many people believe that maybe it's actually boiling because of the electricity heating it up, and there might be hundreds of gargantuans around that area, as there are parts of the Warhammer fantasy world that are yet to be explored, mostly because they are too dangerous. Like, put it this way, even Dark Elves are hesitant to go to that area unless they really have to, which is in the case of capturing sea dragons and helldrakes. We know pretty much nothing about helldrakes, uh, but it's very, very likely that more gargantuans live throughout that region. Now the Boiling Sea is very very small, but it's also very possible that they reach into the Far Sea. However, we will possibly never know as those areas are generally left pretty blank in terms of lore. 
And lastly, we have the Triton. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video. No creature in the world excites quite as much legend and speculation as Triton. Despite the fascination he excites in mariners, scholars, wizards and priests alike, there is little that can be said about his nature that does not elicit fiery controversy. He is rarely seen, but he is reported to range throughout the seas of the world. He bears a resemblance to the winsome sirens that are occasionally glimpsed darting about the islands of the Tillian Sea. Above the waist, he is shaped much like a man, with a powerful frame and handsome if savage visage. He has a thick mane of hair and a heavy shaggy beard. Below his navel, he has the loins and tail of a fish. He is also truly titanic. Even the vast bone crusher giants are dwarfed by mighty Triton. Whilst he is undoubtedly monstrous, there are signs that Triton is more than a mere beast. He bears accoutrements in the form of a spiked crown, and a vast trident capable of impaling the hull of the larger ships. Both items are made from a strange metal that is hard as iron and incorruptible as gold. Where these artifacts can have come from is a mystery. No worldly forge is large enough to have produced them. Triton is a master of several mysterious powers, able to control the elements and tame the monsters of the deep. His abilities share common ground with the practice of sea magic and the miracles performed by priests of Manan. Yet despite such evidence of intelligence and sophistication, he has never been known to communicate with mariners. While he does make arcane utterances when conjuring his spells, if he speaks a language, it is not recognised by elves or wizards. A faction amongst the Lore Masters of Safri claimed that Triton dwelled within the ocean before the coming of Chaos, and that he taught their own forebears the skills of sailing and navigation. They say he was once smaller, but communicative and cooperative. When Chaos entered the world, it alerted Triton, causing him to grow greatly in size and strength, but robbing him of either the ability or the inclination to speak. Another theory has it that Triton was unaffected by Chaos, and that his reticence is due to the great offence he takes at the temerity of sailors who plunder the seas for food and whale oil. Triton does seem to bear some affection for the creatures of the ocean, as evidenced by the history of hostility as shown towards the Dark Elves, whose subjugation of the Carabis and the Sea Dragons seems to rouse his ire. To the humans of the Old World, Triton is believed to share some relationship to Manan, though folktales and apocryphal testaments have it that he is variously the Sea God's brother, son, avatar, first follower, or divine servant. The elves suppose the matter is not so simple, for the Druki honour Mathlan, the elven deity whose domain and nature share a great deal with those of Manan, as earnestly as do the seafarers of Kofik, and still Triton bears them murderous resentment. So again, there's only one of this kind, and it's really, really curious because we know that there are multiple sea gods, right? We've got Stormfells, we've got Mathlan, we've got Manan. It's very possible that he is an avatar. Again, we've seen avatars happen. Kernus has an avatar known as Orion. So it's not completely out of the question that he might be a sort of avatar from the elven deities or could actually be an avatar of Manan. I doubt Stormfells because he is aggressive, but not too aggressive. Um, it's, I don't know, it's really, really, really curious. I originally thought that this was going to be an elemental of water, an elemental of life, but the very book that I'm quoting here, which is Sea of Claws, actually has an elemental of life, which is a water spirit. So this is something completely different, and has actually made me question a lot of times, because he's been in the lore for many, many, many years. I'd like to think that it's a chaos corruption that made him stronger and larger, mostly because we know it's happened to other races which haven't fallen to chaos, it's just chaos affected them and they had to grow. But I guess we'll never know unless some details come in, maybe during Warhammer the Old World or future Warhammer fantasy roleplay books. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, why didn't you mention the uh, Merworm or the Sea Dragon or stuff that actually belongs to the Vampire Coast? And the only reason I didn't do that is because those stuff are already well known. I kind of wanted to talk about uh, lesser known creatures because I felt that that would be a really fun topic. Uh, let me know if you guys thought that was the case. 
But uh, let me know what you guys think about these creatures in the comments below. What are some other creatures that I might have not mentioned in this video that live in the depths of the Warhammer oceans and you feel are just really, really terrifying? And before anyone says anything, don't worry, there's going to be a video on the Fishmen. I've been working on something. But with all that being said, have a great day, guys. I think I'm near the tail end of my flu, so I should be sounding more normal, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, have a great day. <laughs>